Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah Waba' An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an Qal Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Inna Allah ta'ala qal So on the authority of Abu Hurairah He says that the messenger of Allah Peace and blessings be upon him said That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Which means that this is a hadith qudsi he says, Man li waliyan faqad bil Whoever shows animosity towards a friend of mine, towards somebody that, I, that is beloved to me, I declare war against that person. And then he said, Wama abdi That no one, none of my servants can get closer to me Except with something which I have made fard upon them. Something that I've prescribed for them. So basically what, what Allah is saying here. This is a hadith but being quoted uh, on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying that if you want to get close to Allah. The first thing you have to do is make sure that you fulfill all of your fara'in. All of the requirements that you have in Islam. You can't do this. This is what you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to say you know what. I'm going to skip, you know, Fajr prayer and I'm going to fast a little bit of Ramadan, but I'm going to give so much charity and I'm going to do so many other good deeds. But you're going to neglect the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mandatory on you. And then you say, I'm going to get close to Allah by doing all of the zikr and remembrance of Allah or something like that. It doesn't make any sense. So this is the first thing. And then he says, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ is that my servant will keep on doing things which are from the nawafil, from the extra things, the nafil things like charity and zikr and extra prayers and all of those other things until I love him. So the way to get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to first fulfill all the obligations and then afterwards keep on adding as many nawafil, as many additional things as you can possibly get in there. And it has to be in this order. It's important. Right? The, the order is very important because some people they mess it up. Some people, their priorities are, are, are mixed up. So they'll, for example, they'll come late in Ramadan and they'll pray the entire Taraweeh prayer, but they skipped Isha. Or they'll pray Qiyam, they'll go to a Qiyam program. This happens with some, I've uh, seen this in many colleges, MSA. They'll stay, they'll do the whole Qiyam program, mashallah, staying all night, listening to all the lectures, doing all the prayers, and they go to sleep and they won't pray Fajr. You say, how can that be? Or they'll go, for example, they'll go for the protest and they'll protest for Palestine. And they'll protest for this place and they'll protest for that place. And then it comes time for Salah. And they go, man, we just did, you know, we were just doing something for Allah. We were just engaged in uh, uh, jihad against uh, a tyrannical ruler. But then they won't pray. You say something's wrong with your priorities. Because the priority should always be the fara'id. Things are which are requirement in Islam. And once you do that, then you get to the nawafil. Then you get to the additional things when you get to that level. Anyways, the hadith is a little bit longer. But the point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with anyone who shows animosity to somebody that I love, to a friend of mine, to a wali. And then he explains how do you get into that category? How can you actually get there? Well, first you need to fulfill the fara'id. Then you need to do extra nawafil. So if you want to get into that category, here's how you do it. And if you get into the category where you know, Allah, you're so beloved to Allah because you're doing all of these things, then Allah's got your back. Allah's going to protect you. Anyone tries to mess with you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I declare war on that person. This is, the, this is the reality. So basically the messenger of Allah is like, you know, this is what Allah said. That Allah is going to take care of the people who are beloved to him. And if you want to get there, this is how you do it. So anyway, this is a hadith Qudsi. And just a quick note, a hadith Qudsi is a difference between... Uh, uh, hadith Qudsi basically means where the Prophet salam, says that Allah said. The difference between that and the Quran is that this hadith Qudsi is not in the Quran. So Allah is saying something and the Prophet is saying that he said that, but it's not part of the Quran. So among the differences are, number one, the scholars say, that every verse of the Quran is continuously narrated, it's tawatur. Right? Hadith Qudsi are not necessary tawatur. In fact, there are some of them that are weak hadith actually. So this is one difference. The second difference is that the wording of the Quran is directly from Allah. Word for word is directly coming from Allah. 
The second one, when it comes to Hadith Qudsi, it's actually Riwaya Bil Ma'na. It's actually something which is being narrated from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and from other narrators later on. And it's not going to have the same level of exact wording that this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for word for word. There's some other differences, but these are among the main differences between a verse of the Quran and a Hadith Qudsi. Just for your knowledge on the side. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people who, who become beloved, to become your beloved, O oh Allah. And we ask, Allah, we ask you, O oh Allah, to help us to become among the people who fulfill all of our obligations and increase that by doing extra things as well. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa